Hi friends, this is the long awaited episode you've all been asking for. This is gonna be all of my diet tips and all the things that I've used to lose weight. This video is gonna be what little me wish he could have found. All the things I've had to learn on my own and listen to these idiots online say that certain things work and certain things, no. I got all the real tricks right here. And one thing before we jump in to all the trigger warning weirdos, Go. This is not a safe space for you. This is for real life, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna give it to you straight. I'm gonna tell you a couple things you need to get right in your mind and get the right mindset and things you need to just realize and get solid with before you try and jump into everything because then I'm gonna give you tips. Like realistic, these are good, these are bad, do this instead of this. Like I'm gonna give you the actual applicable steps of like things to do and ways to change your eating habits and everything around it. So let's start off with mindset. If you want to lose weight, your entire life is about to change. This is not like a small thing. When you set out on the goal to lose weight, what you have to get right in your head and expect is your entire life is about to feel different. Your entire life is about to change as you know it. And just because something is new or feels different, it does not mean it's bad. It does not mean it hurts. It's just different. So I wanted to say this before your brain immediately starts running with unfamiliarity and thinking it's bad and wanting to resort back to comfort because it's known, that's to be expected. But now you're aware of it, you're one step ahead of your brain. Hey, just cause it's new, doesn't mean it's bad. We're adjusting to the way that life feels now with these new habits. The next thing I wanna say is you need to become aware of the fact that you can feel hungry and not eat. You can choose to not eat even if you feel hungry. That's something that I was trapped in for so long. Like I acted like I couldn't <laughs> and I really was convinced like, no, I have to eat. I can't stop eating. You can feel hungry and not eat. Same way you can be tired and not sleep. It's a choice. You can fully fight off urges, not even fight off urges, but like you can not let your emotions and the way you feel dictate what you do. It's like being thirsty. You can be thirsty and not drink. You can be tired and not sleep. You can be horny and not fuck. It is possible, and I wanna say that. And making you aware of this thing actually being possible, you having control, is because it doesn't feel like it. It feels very overwhelming when you have urges for things. And food absolutely is a comfort. I know it fully. I was fat as hell when I was growing up. I was a big kid. I was big for most of my like years growing up. And food is absolutely a comfort. But what you have to understand about comfort is you're feeling discomfort and you found a way to comfort yourself and make yourself feel better, which is food. What happens when you no longer allow yourself to run to the comfort mechanism that you know, when you make yourself sit in the discomfort and you're like, okay, I can't go eat. I'm not gonna choose that comfort anymore. What other comfort can I find? You've never explored this perspective. So I want you to sit in the discomfort and no longer run back to what you know. Open up to the potential of experiencing new comforts and other things you can do that are comforting. You can absolutely turn to food anytime you want it. It's always there. Are you gonna choose it? Or do you wanna sit in there and explore other ways to comfort it? Because if you just find one other way to comfort yourself, that's not food. Let's say if every other time you feel discomfort and you want to eat about it and comfort yourself, if you just 50% of the time, every other time you feel uncomfortable, jump to your new comfort instead of eating, you will lose weight. That's just one thing to get. You don't have to give up the comfort of food forever. You can go back to it. You can. It's always there when you need it. That's your comfort. That's the one that you know it's consistent, it's there. You do not have to give it up. If your goal is just to lose weight, this is one way to do it and get it right in your head. The comfort's always there. And you're never gonna be able to stop eating. That's the bitch about being a human being. You gotta have food to live. And that's why it's one of the hardest addictions to beat or get control over because a heroin addict can go quit and then live without it. It's gonna be hard to tell. But like, imagine you needed heroin to live every day and you can only take this much. You can't take too much. That's like, that's what food is. You're literally faced with that all the time. Like you have to keep eating it. So what I want you to get is like, this is not something that's like forever gone. Like you're have to, you have to be this way forever. You're allowed to fuck up. 
you're allowed to resort back to old patterns. But as long as you keep trying to change them and like you can fluctuate back and forth between new comfort and old comfort, and you're gonna see a decrease in the weight, trust. And one more thing about the point where I said, you can feel hungry and still choose not to eat. The one thing I have to tell myself all the time, it's kind of rough, is you're not gonna die. Like be for real. Like when I go in the kitchen and I'm like wanting to eat real bad, like sometimes I have to just check myself and be like, Leo, you're not gonna die. Like you're fine. You're gonna eat again in the morning, you know? And it's okay to eat. But when you start eating and then you get to that point where you wanna keep going and like lead to a binge, you're not gonna die if you don't binge. That's one thing that helped me a lot when I was binging a lot before I got a grip on it. I'm gonna do a full podcast episode about binge eating. But that's one thing that helped me a lot is being like, Leo, you're not gonna die if you resist this urge. Go to sleep. Now the last little mindset piece I wanna give you before we jump into the steps is you're going to feel uncomfortable and off while you're losing weight. Not that you're gonna feel off in a bad way, but it's not the most enjoyable experience because your body is using itself for energy. There's gonna be a little discomfort. You're not gonna feel it, it doesn't hurt. Like you've all gained weight and lost weight, like you don't notice it, but when your body is having to use itself for energy instead of food that you're giving it, it doesn't have a lot of just excess resources there to use, so it has to start breaking down your fat and using it as energy. There's a lot of new hormones and things going on, and it's gonna feel new, and it's gonna feel stressful, and it's gonna feel weird. You're gonna wanna eat. You're gonna have like weird thoughts, and your mind will like play with you a little bit. But just understanding your body is using itself for energy instead of having excess food around. There's a lot of things gonna be going on inside you, especially hormonally and emotionally, like mentally. It's gonna feel off, it's gonna feel weird. It's not gonna be the most enjoyable experience. But I do wanna say it's not like the worst thing in the world. I'm just saying this to prepare you mentally. Like it's not like it hurts. It's not like a weird or a bad thing. It actually feels really good. It's just the mental part of it that I wanted to prepare you for. Now here's the science behind losing weight. I'm gonna make it very easy for you. And things look a little different because I recorded this episode a few days ago and I just thought of this, I need to add it in. Losing weight is a numbers game. Calories, look at them as energy. When you have an excess of energy and calories in your body, your body is going to store that as fat. Your body is not against you. Your body is doing what it's supposed to do. What happens with weight loss is these stores that you have of fat on your body are used for energy. So when you don't have enough calories that you're eating, your body will start to use the fat stores and the energy stores that it created when you gave it extra. But weight loss is literally a numbers game. I've tried everything in the book and that's really what it is. It's a numbers game of what's going in and what's going out. Like if you take in a lot of energy and excess calories and you're not expending them or using them, your body will store it. So your body burns calories every single day. Your body needs a certain amount of energy and calories to maintain itself. And this is your maintenance calories for your body to do what it needs to do and figure itself out and keep itself going. When you eat more than that is when you're going to gain weight. If you eat less than that, you will lose weight. And everybody has this whole big fight about maintenance calories and what everybody's number is. Everybody's number is going to be different. It's going to be dependent on your age, weight, height, gender, everything. Like everything is going to be a contributing factor to how many calories you burn just day to day. So for the people who want to know what their maintenance calories are, go on Google and literally type in calorie calculator. And there's going to be a lot of different links. Click like five different links and put in all of your information, like your age, your sex, your height, your activity level, put it into the calculator and it's gonna give you a number at the bottom. A lot of people say 1500 calories for like normal women is like maintenance. Everyone's gonna be different because I'm six foot seven as a dude and I work out a lot. My maintenance is like 3000 to 3500 depending on how hard I work out. But if you wanna figure out what your number is to figure out your maintenance, to base your diet around, go put your information into like five of these different calculators because they're all gonna give you a different number, but they're all gonna be around the same. And then just take the average of all of those numbers and you have like your baseline. Okay, this is most likely my maintenance. Now you have a starting point of how many calories you should be looking at to eat a day to maintain yourself. And there's two ways you can Play with this number. If you wanna lose weight, you can eat less food and eat less calories, 
or you can eat the same amount of calories as your maintenance and exercise, which will put you in a negative. That's where you want to be. There's two ways to get to it. So you can eat less or exercise more, either one. But it is literally as simple as that. You're going to have to start looking at the numbers and understand that it is a numbers game. You can play the game or you can lose. It sucks. It's not fun to play the game, but it is a game. So here's your trick for the game. There are 3,500 calories and one pound of fat. So if you want to lose a pound of fat a week, you need to be in a 500 calorie deficit a day. Whether that's eating the same amount and burning 500 calories, or if you want to eat 250 calories less and then exercise for 250 calories, do cardio, go to the gym, whatever it is, find a way to get into that deficit. That's how long it takes to lose a pound of fat if you're in a 500 calorie deficit a day. It takes one week. That's like the most healthily recommended way to do it. People don't recommend going lower than that, but there are certain times where I have dropped it to like a thousand calorie deficit, eating 500 less and doing 500 calories worth of like exercise. There's been times where I've done more. That's not the most recommended way to do it, but if you want to speed up the results, it's literally a numbers game. And this information, me sharing it like this, people are going to get mad and say that I'm like putting people in danger. No, you have the information. I just fucking told you what's healthy. Now, if you want to follow it and do the healthy 500 calories a day deficit, do it. If you want to do more, that's possible. I'm not encouraging it. I'm just saying the science behind it. But that's the main thing to remember. 3,500 calories are in one pound of fat. How fast you want to lose it is up to you, but you do run the risk of certain things with your health. So I'd say take it easy and start with the 500 calorie deficit. Honestly, try the 250 of eating a little bit less and 250 calories of like burning calories with exercise, and that'll get you on a good road, but losing a pound a week, it might happen faster than you think. Cause some days you're more active than you realize. And you're not just sitting on your ass all day. I mean, I hope not just like working or sitting on the couch or doing anything. Like sometimes you're moving groceries. Sometimes you're moving furniture. Sometimes you're just like running errands and out running around all day or you're shopping, but certain days you burn more than other days. So you might be in more of a deficit than you think. And it can happen faster, but that's the main thing to get 3,500 calories is one pound of fat. And one more little piece, every day you're going to fluctuate and look different and feel different. Some days you're going to hold a little bit more water. And if you weigh yourself every single day, that's not really the best indicator of weight loss. I go by what's in the mirror, how I look and how I feel. When you start getting into this weight loss journey and you're eating lower amounts of calories, Every single day, depending on what you eat, you're going to look and feel different because with these calories, you can eat whatever you want. You can eat foods that are good for you, or you can eat chocolate cake. As long as it's under your maintenance calories, you will still lose weight no matter what you eat. I'm not talking about the whole what's healthy, what's not. I'm telling you the science behind losing weight. You can eat what you want, but are you going to use what you can eat to get nutritious things? Or you just want to eat whatever you want and have it go below. It's whatever you want to do. But every single day you are going to fluctuate and some days you're going to wake up puffy. Some days you're going to wake up bloated. Some days you're going to hold a little bit more water. When's the last time you took a shit? How much water are you holding? Are you dehydrated or are you overhydrated? What is it? Like sometimes you're bloated, sometimes you're not. And I just want you to know with the numbers game aspect, if you've been going for like a week or like three days and you've been eating lower than your normal calories and you're not seeing the scale go down, do not let it mess with your head. Get grounded and get stabilized in the numbers game. It is numbers. So it doesn't matter if one day you wake up and you feel puffy and you feel fat and you feel bigger. Don't make it turn into a whole spiral of like, this is for nothing, this isn't working, and go binge and go back to your old eating habits. Stay consistent with the numbers because you don't know how you're going to feel the next day. Maybe you're holding on to a little extra water. Maybe you need to shit. Who knows? We're human beings. We're not machines. So we're going to hold things and weight's going to move around. Weight's going to fluctuate. Give it time and be consistent with the numbers aspect. Don't freak out. Don't get upset. You're going to have days where you're eating low calories and you wake up and you feel bigger than you did the day before. 
Trust me, it's just a low water weight. You're going to be fine. Don't let this mentally throw you off. The biggest thing with this is mindset. That's why I'm hitting so much of it in the beginning. Just keep on track with the numbers game and know and trust you are on track. You are achieving what you're trying to achieve. You are losing weight. If you're eating less than your maintenance calories or if you're eating your maintenance calories and exercising, you are losing weight. Even if you don't feel like it right now, don't base how you feel every single day and make that like the determining factor of if you're losing weight and don't base it off the scale because you might be holding more water, like I said, and you're not going to see the scale go down. You're going to stress out. There's also going to be days where you feel lean and you feel like way smaller than you ever have. And you're going to look at the scale and you're going to be the same weight. It's going to fluctuate. It's going to be different. Don't trip out over the scale. Don't trip out over how you feel. If you feel puffy, stay on track with the numbers and stay consistent. Don't let this fool you and throw you off track. Cause I dealt with that a lot in the beginning of like this whole journey of learning how to lose weight. Like you wake up some days, you feel puffy, you feel bloated. You're like, fuck it. It ain't working. And you binge to comfort yourself because you're disappointed of what you're seeing or not seeing. So do not let this throw you off track. It is a numbers game. If you stick to the numbers, you're fine. You have your reassurance. Literally, if you want to write down everything you eat, you have reassurance. You can look at it like, okay, I know I feel a little puffy today, but I am losing weight. Just give it a couple days. Give your body a second to regulate itself and get the water weight off or like go to the bathroom or whatever you need to do. Regroup after a couple of days, not every day. Now for the first tip, it's something simple and something you need to start doing right now. Start looking at nutrition labels for your food. You're going to have to become accountable for what you're putting in your body. You need to see what you're putting into it. Like you need to see what's going on. You can't just play the whole blind game forever. Look how far it's got you. If you're struggling with your weight, your assessment is not good. It's not accurate. Like I'm talking at my younger self, like, you have to start being accountable with what you're putting in your body. You think you can just go eat a full bag of frozen mozzarella sticks. Like you think you could just fry those up and just eat them. That's like 20,000 calories, kid. I used to just eat a whole bag of cheese sticks just cause they's good. And I didn't really pay attention. You have to start being accountable with what you're eating and what you're putting into your body. That's the biggest thing. No more blind, no more fuck it moments. Like if you're going to have a moment where you do binge, at least just look at the labels, just get in the habit of looking at labels. But the biggest thing with looking at labels is it's going to help you figure out what you can and can't eat. Like one thing I eat a lot is Cheez-Its, like the chips, like the crackers. There's 150 calories in 27 crackers. You can sit there and just eat them and it's not going to kill you. Like it's not going to be the worst thing for you, but there's so many marketing tactics for like healthy foods and this health nut shit where they promote that it's like healthy and it's good for you. That doesn't mean it's low calorie, low fat, like this smart pop shit. That's not good popcorn to be eating. If you're trying to lose weight, it's got a good amount of calories and looking at the serving sizes. That's one more thing that you need to start looking at with a nutrition label is the serving sizes of how much of something you should be eating. Because when I was little, I used to eat two packs of ramen noodles as like a snack. Like, oh, okay, we're waiting for dinner. Like, let me eat that. And then a couple hours we'll have dinner. There's two servings per one pack of ramen noodles. So there's also a lot of sodium in that. You got to watch your ass with that, like for heart reasons and like health reasons, <laughs> but just based on the weight loss standpoint, like you don't realize how many calories are really in something like, like a piece of cheesecake usually will have around a thousand calories in it. And I used to be able to put down half of a cheesecake, like six pieces. <laughs> Or four, how many is that? How many is half? Like four, six, I don't know. But my point is just become aware of what you're putting in your body. Even if you don't change it right away, just becoming aware of it. And then also, like I said, with nutrition labels, being able to weed out what's good and what's bad. Like certain things are promoted like they're healthy and they're really not. Like they're actually way more calorie dense and like fat dense than like the regular stuff like Cheez-Its. Like there's so many healthy little crackers out there. Cheez-Its are better when you're talking about calories and fat. Like they're not as bad. Like you can eat Cheez-Its. There are certain things you're going to be able to eat and not realize it because you haven't looked at the label. Like don't just trust the whole like, oh, it's healthy. It's, it's low fat. It's like reduce this, reduce that. Most of the times it's bullshit. So get comfortable with reading the labels for that aspect, finding things you can and can't eat because it doesn't go with your goals, but also just to become aware of like the number of calories and the amount of something that you're consuming. Cause it's all fun and games when you don't get to look. Like when you don't look, oh, it's all fun and game. Oh, whatever. I just have this. I have that. No, as soon as you start looking, you're like, 
fuck, is it worth it? That's where you want to be. You want to be looking at things like, damn, I know what's in that. Like I haven't eaten cheesecake in like years, like not a full like piece of cheesecake or like half a cheesecake like I used to do. Like I still eat dessert and I'm going to tell you how I eat it in a minute, but we're going to get there. So now I'm going to tell you things you can swap out. But the first thing I want to tell you is the one thing you have to cut. And I don't want to say that you need to cut out anything like all together, but like a safe bet is anything fried, any fried food, cut it, get rid of it. Like that's a safe bet because there's like dessert and stuff like that. You still want to have a little bit. You still want to have certain things. But the number one thing I'd say is cut out fried foods, anything fried, just omit it and like don't have it. And if you're going to have it, let it be like once in a while, once a week, once every two weeks, whatever it is. That's one thing to help you weed out a lot of options whether you're eating out or eating at home. Anything fried, don't eat it. Don't worry about it. Like there's actually no like health benefit from fried food for these people who are gonna come on here and try and cancel me saying I'm promoting eating disorders. Explain me one fried thing that's fucking good for you. All right, I'll wait. Time's up, fuck you. <laughs> so the first thing to swap is sodas. Any soda you drink, just get the diet version or get the zero version, like Diet Coke, Diet 7-Up is my favorite thing in the world, like Diet Sprite's okay, I get that when I can't get Diet 7-Up. But sodas are so much sugar and carbs for no reason. Like if you're drinking any liquid calories, it's a waste in my opinion. Unless it's like a healthy juice or like, so like a healthy like smoothie or like a protein shake, okay fine. But like, I would much rather eat calories than drink some soda, you know what I mean? But most people's hesitation with diet sodas is they've heard the whole aspartame is bad for you shit because it's posted everywhere. The amount of aspartame you would actually need to consume to hurt you and to have negative health effects is a copious amount. It's a lot. It does not even compare to what's in a soda. You could drink a 12 pack a day and it's not even near the amount that would hurt you. Like look up the science behind it before you believe these dipshits online. Cause I was over here giving up all soda. No girl, I drink diet soda all the time. It's good as hell. And it's not bad enough to hurt you. And if you want to talk about weighing the pros and the cons and the risks of aspartame and artificial sodas, look at what else you're doing in your life. A lot of people do drugs. A lot of people drink alcohol. A lot of people smoke cigarettes and they're worried about a little aspartame. Get fucking real, okay? Drink the diet sodas, you'll be fine. <laughs> okay, next thing is ice cream. I eat ice cream every single day, but I eat the lower calorie, like healthy stuff. So like Halo Top, I like, Carb Smart, I like. Those are two brands that I like that I like eat all the time. And I'm not kidding, because I love ice cream. And I like to eat a lot of it. So eating lower calorie ice creams there's no guilt, there's no nothing, there's no worry. It's like, just enjoy it. Like you're allowed to have that enjoyment of like eating ice cream without the 2000 calories because you ate the whole container, you know? Like it'll be a couple hundred and it's not bad, like two, 300. The next thing I swap is cheese. I'll do fat-free cheese or reduced fat cheese. Even if you just do reduced fat, it's better than the whole fat. Same thing with milk. If you do reduced fat, it's still better than whole. And if you're gonna drink chocolate milk, if you don't like the taste of like the sugar-free or the bad tasting chocolate milk because it's diet or it's healthy, get a regular chocolate milk and then get a skinny chocolate milk and get a glass and put half of each. It tastes the same as the original one, half the calories. See, you just gotta think smarter, not harder. Also, almond milk is good. Like you can drink that and it's like 30 calories or something like that for like a cup, which is pretty good. And then also with butter. Can't believe it's not butter, trust. Get the light one, just don't use real butter. Don't, like there's no point. If you're ever gonna try and get fats from a certain way, get olive oil. That's like healthy, clean. Watch it though, don't be using it in everything because it is high in fat and like calories. It's good though, good fat, good calories, like it's good for you. But butter, get the fake shit that tastes real, trust me. The next thing is bread. And Sarah Lee has this bread, it's like 45 calories per slice. A lot of people don't understand with like sandwiches, if there's a hundred calories on one slice of bread, you got two pieces, you got everything you got in the middle with the cheese and all that. Like a, a sandwich can easily turn from like with mayonnaise and all this other crap in it to over 600 calories for one sandwich. And who's eating one sandwich? Nobody, you got two. That's like 1200, you put some chips, 1500 calories. You drink a real soda, 17, 1800 calories for your little like two sandwiches and some chips. That's a lot. That's not the point though. My point is bread. Eat the lower calorie bread. Like a lot of them, 
actually don't taste bad. Like they're actually really good. Like the Sarah Lee one, I love. Like they have like a white one and like a wheat one. They're all pretty good. The next thing is peanut butter. Switch for a peanut butter powder and like the one where you can like mix it with like water or milk or something and it will turn into peanut butter. It's like half, I think it's less than half the calories. But the point is peanut butter is not bad for you. It's just bad for you in the amount that most of us eat it. Cause who's just getting a little bit? Nobody. Who's eating two tablespoons of it for almost 200 calories? None of us. We're eating like spoonfuls of it. So if you're going to eat peanut butter, actually eat the recommended serving size because it can easily and quickly stack up. Like that's probably one of the worst things you can eat like and binge is like peanut butter because it's going to fuck up your digestion. And also with a lot of calories and a lot of fat, it's going to make you feel really bad physically, not just emotionally. I'm not talking about like that aspect. Like it's gonna make you feel like shit, but peanut butter powder is something that I eat a lot. Even if, like I said, you want to do half normal peanut butter, half a serving of peanut butter powder or like a full serving of it with a little milk, mix it up and it tastes more real, go for it. But that's one thing I want to mention because peanut butter is not bad for you. It's good to eat it. But the amount that I used to eat it, oh, it would get me. <laughs> Next thing we're talking about is coffee creamers. You can have coffee creamer. Okay. You can have the one that's like 35, 45 calories. Who cares? All right. But if you're one of those people who fills up like half of your cup with creamer and like a splash of coffee. Babe, how about we take that back a little bit? How about let's not be excessive with the creamer? And I'm someone who likes coffee sweet. So a way that I kind of do coffee with the creamer, because I'm not getting the fat free one. I'm not getting the sugar free one. It tastes like shit. I want the real coffee creamer. Like that's the thing that like I don't care about. But if you put a little bit in the glass and then you take like an equal packet, like an artificial sugar, like a stevia or something like that. And you put one of those in there, you can use less creamer and still get like a very sweet coffee and it'll be a little milky because you added some. That's a little trick that I do with my coffee every day. But really don't feel bad about the coffee creamer. Like don't have no guilt around that. It's not enough to hurt you or make that big of a difference if you use it like normal ish, but not the people who be drinking half a cup of it with the splashy coffee like I was talking about. <laughs> And for the people who like to put whipped cream on their coffee, it's fine. It's not going to hurt you. A little red can and you like spray it on top. Fine. But the caramel, cut that shit. Quit putting caramel on coffee. That's a waste. Not because it doesn't taste good, but it's just a waste of calories. Like, girl, you got the creamer in already. You got the whipped cream. That's enough. This is one swap I have for sushi. And a lot of people are going to get mad. Don't get anything fried when you go get sushi. Like any fried roll, any tempura roll that's fried. Don't get it. Get everything as close to raw as possible or like the baked rolls are usually fine. But also when you're out at sushi, if they put spicy mayo or eel sauce or yum yum sauce on your roll, that's fine. Just don't get extra on the side. Eat the bit that's on the roll, okay? Because spicy mayo adds up fast. Like for you to eat one of them little containers of it, that's fewer other calories. So enjoy it on the roll if they put it on there, fine. But just be aware, eel sauce has a lot of sugar, spicy mayo is bad as hell, and so is yum yum sauce. Like they all taste really good, they're delicious, but they're easy to sneak up on you. It's like any sauces at any places, usually you want to kind of stay away from, like buffalo sauce is fine, any kind of mustard is fine, vinegar is fine, balsamic or regular, anything like that with sauces, especially like for salads and stuff, that's usually like what you want to stay away from is like the ranch, the blue cheese, the fucking Caesar, what's the other one? Like the Thousand Island, don't. <laughs> but one thing that I like to put on salads is like I do like a balsamic vinegar or I'll just put regular vinegar and you can put low fat like mayonnaise in it. But if I'm not doing that, I'll put popcorn seasoning in it. Or you put the vinegar with the popcorn seasoning. Like the little seasoning things that like you sprinkle on popcorn, put that in a salad, get the ranch one, put it on the thing, done. Next is my little swap with eggs. If you're gonna eat eggs, let's say like you usually eat six eggs. Cut that back and eat three eggs, but take like four or five egg whites and put it in there. It's the same amount of eggs. It's probably gonna be a little bit more because you can add more egg white, but you're gonna cut the calories in half because one egg is like 80 calories. And that's a lot when you start eating a lot of eggs. Like I eat three eggs and half a cup of egg whites every single morning. But that's just one little trick I like to do with eggs because a lot of people don't think of that they think eggs oh healthy fine but that's a quick way to like cut it a little one more thing i want to mention about like a marinara sauce or like a red sauce like a pasta sauce look for the ones that are low calorie read the nutrition label you can still have these things 
but just look for the like healthier version or like the lower sodium. That's a good thing just to do. It's not low calorie, but like lower sodium is good for the heart. Trust. But also you can find the ones with less fat or less calories and you can eat more of it. Now let's talk about the sponsor of today's podcast and it's Squeezed. It's my favorite company for juice cleanses. So we've all heard about like a juice cleanse where you like drink certain juices for a few days. I've done their juice cleanses. I've done the three day and the five day and they have a couple of options. So when I do cleanses, if I'm just like bloated or I feel weird or I just like want to get back to like feeling like snatched again, I'll do like a three day cleanse and they have two types of cleanses. So they have the squeezed cleanse and the super squeeze. And the difference that I've noticed is the squeezed cleanse has more like sugar and a little bit more calories, but it's good if that's all you're drinking because a lot of the juice cleanses, they say that you're only supposed to drink the juice, but you can eat food also while you do these cleanses, but they all do taste really good. The squeezed cleanse, has a little bit more calories, like not bad at all. I'm being dramatic because like I don't like to drink calories, but these are worth it because it's full of so many nutrients. But their super squeeze cleanse is the one that I like the most because it's a lot more just straight juice in the bottle. And a lot of people think that juice cleanses are like a laxative and they're going to make you like run to the bathroom. I didn't notice that at all with any of these. And I do these cleanses a lot when I'm sick because it's not good to like be eating a bunch of food while your body's trying to fight off a cold or fight off a sickness. So I'll do juice cleanses. And this is the company that I use. If you guys follow me on Snapchat, you know, I post them all the time. But one trick that I do when I do the cleanses when I'm sick is I'll do the spicy squeezed or the spicy super squeezed. And it's the same juices, but they're spicy. And I don't know, I just feel like it cleans me out and like gets my body like back to health. But like I said, you can do these cleanses just to do a cleanse. Like if you've been eating bad and you want to get back on track, if you just want to like slim down like after you eat bad and you're tired and you're like sluggish this gets you back going and it gets your energy levels back up i always feel like more clear-headed and like more energized when i do these cleanses so i've been doing them often but how i also said you can still eat food while you do the cleanses you're supposed to do them just the juices like there's enough nutrients and calories and things in the juices to give you what you need and that's how it's recommended to do it if you're interested in doing one of their cleanses you can go to squeezed.com and they have same day local delivery like when you check out and you do it you schedule when you want everything delivered they have same day delivery in most places but they also have pretty fast nationwide shipping but the main reason i want to tell you is because if you want to try one of the cleanses if you use code aware at checkout it gives you free shipping regardless of where you're at so thank you to Squeeze for sponsoring this episode. And remember, it's squeezed.com and use code AWARE. All right, the next couple of tips are going to be things to remove like unnecessary calories. And a couple of these are like for when you go out to eat. So like I said, drinks with calories. Do not drink calories. And now I'm going to hit on like juices. Most juices you think are like, oh, healthy. It's like fruit juice. No, the fuck it's not. It's got a bunch of sugar pumped in it. Check the labels on everything because you might think you're being healthy and you're not. But that's my kind of go-to is like, no juice, no sodas that aren't diet, no nothing, like no liquid, nothing. Just pay attention to that, especially at restaurants. And if you are going to order a regular Coke at a restaurant, pay attention to how many you drink. Get a regular Coke for the first one if you don't like the taste of the diet or ask them to do half diet, half regular. And if you drink three because they fill it up three times, you really only drink a Coke and a half because you did half and half versus if you drink three sodas at a restaurant, they're bigger than a can. They got more sugar and more calories. You're drinking more than you think. So that's what I'm just saying. Pay attention to that. And my little half and half trick, trust. Like just do that or just do the damn diet. You can't tell the difference. After a while, you won't be able to tell the difference. <laughs> One thing I do at restaurants, if I get a steak or something or like a chicken or whatever I'm getting, I'll remove this butter off of it. Like, you know how they bring out the steak and it's like got melted butter on top. Usually it's like still in a ball. I'll just scoop it off and get it off the plate and like not eat the extra butter for what? Because most restaurants already cook it in butter. So you don't need the extra just for the presentation to look cute. And also if you're going to order vegetables, tell them no butter because they'll fuck up some vegetables by throwing a whole bunch of butter in it. Like restaurants want vegetables to taste good. So they're going to do whatever they can. They're not going to have like weight loss goals in mind. So that's one thing I do. Also with oil, ask them to take oil off salads or like appetizers or like certain things like you know what they like finish something off and they put oil on it ask them not to do that it adds up real quick and it's just not worth it like it's not meh. it's like you know you go to those italian restaurants they bring you the bread and the oil girl just eat the balsamic put a little oil eat the balsamic fine but like you don't realize you're eating 500 calories in oil <laughs> okay the next thing is avocado and people give me shit for this all the time if you want to eat avocado eat an avocado who cares but if you're out at a restaurant, 
eat half of what they give you. And if you're at home eating an avocado, eat half, like save the other half for later. But at a restaurant, they usually will give you more than you should eat at a time. Like it can stack up in calories very quickly. And like going to a Mexican restaurant, if you get that guacamole in that big bowl, I can put the whole thing down. That's probably over a thousand calories. And then you got the queso and you got all the chips. Like you, it stacks up so easy. People are like, oh my God, I just can't lose weight. And it's literally right in front of your face as soon as you start paying attention. Like it sucks and you're gonna miss these things and you can have them, but if you wanna lose weight, you can't have them all the time or you can't have them in the amount you're used to having them because you can eat a little bit of anything you want. Another thing I get removed at restaurants is cheese. Like a salad, get the cheese taken off, come on. Grow up. You don't need the cheese on everything. Like if you get a baked potato or something, take the cheese off, take the butter off. Just eat the potato, put some salt, cute. The next thing I try to like stay away from unless I need it is honey because it stacks up real quick and I'd rather eat like a banana or a bunch of fruit because like in one tablespoon of honey, you can have like a cup of blueberries instead. I like density, I like to volume eat. So I look at like what things are and what I could get for it instead. That's my other kind of mindset hack around food is I look at it like money. Like if I have a budget of 3000 calories a day, I have 3000 calories to spend. Now, how do I want to spend them? Is this Snickers bar worth $300 calories that I only have 3000 of? This mindset actually helped my relationship with money a few years ago and I discovered it also. Like just looking at calories, like you have them to spend on things. Like, okay, I can spend my 3000 calories on whatever I want. Do I want to spend it? Is this thing worth it to me? And that's one thing that I use like still, like it's fun. <laughs> but honey is good pre-workout. I just don't like to add it on top of stuff. Like people get it in their tea and people get it on top of shit. Like you get an acai bowl and they douse it in honey. Leave the honey off, girl. You don't need it all the time. Or do a little light, like a little bit. That's just something to be conscious of. Cause like I said, you can eat a cup of fruit or you can eat a, a tablespoon of honey. Girl, give me the fruit. But then you got people who eat like a bowl of fruit and they put honey on top. Put some different. Dang, friend, because now you could have had two bowls of fruit for the same as like the same cost and the same like amount of calories as the one with a little honey on it. Put some equal on it. <laughs> now the last thing for this section of like cutting unnecessary calories is sugar. Use fake sugar. Use the equal to stevia to sweet and low. Use stuff like that. And like I said about the aspartame thing, you're gonna have to eat so much more than you can even like consume for it to hurt you. You're fine with a little fake sugar. If you're that dead set against it, don't fucking eat it then. I don't care. I'm just telling you what works. Now I'm gonna run you through a list of foods that are okay to eat that a lot of people don't think you can and the things that I eat. So I'm gonna hit carbs and protein and then fruits and vegetables because the way I eat fruits and vegetables, I let myself eat as much as I want. So I'm gonna tell you the ones that are like safe. Okay, so for carbs, you got pasta. Pasta's not bad, you can have pasta. People act like you can't. Potatoes, yellow potatoes and sweet potatoes, both of them are fine. But like I said, when you make them, don't be putting all the butter and all the crap on it. Get the low calorie butter, get you some stevia, if you wanna put it on the sweet potato, get you a little cinnamon, done. For like yellow potatoes, you can get low fat sour cream, low fat cheese, low fat butter, a little salt, there you go. You can eat these things. Like this is totally fine. Just think of the ways to substitute and make the calories less so you can still enjoy things. Like I eat all of these things all the time, but let me shut up. Next thing you can eat for the carbs is bananas. You got white and brown rice. White rice is not bad for you. Everybody acts like, oh, it's the devil. You can eat it, you're fine. Quinoa, I did put on the list. I don't eat that shit, but a lot of people <laughs> talk about quinoa. I don't fucking like it. It's a mess, it's weird. Nasty texture and I just, I don't fuck with it. You got oatmeal, cream of wheat, and cream of rice. Those I love. Rice cakes are fine. Honey is fine, like I said, but do it like pre-workout if you're gonna do it or post-workout. Cereal with low fat milk or almond milk. I eat all the time, I love cereal. And cereal is not actually as bad as you think. Like Cinnamon Toast Crunch, it ain't that bad, like calorie wise. And like Cheerios and shit. And like Frosted Flakes, like no, maybe not Frosted Flakes, like Corn Flakes. Put the, put the equal on it. Like get the regular cornflakes, not the frosted flakes. Get the cornflakes, put the fake sugar on it. Done, with less calories. And last thing for carbs is bread, but the low calorie bread I told you about. Those are all fine. You can eat all of these things. Okay, now for protein, 
chicken, duh, steak. But you want to get lean steaks if you're going to get steak. Lean ground beef. That's one thing that people don't pay attention to. Don't ever buy no ground chuck. What the fuck? Look at the percentages of the fat to like the lean meat ratio. So usually like chuck is like 80-20. So it's like 80% meat, 20% fat. The lean ground beef you want is 93-7. Or you can get like 96.4. Some places have that. But always remember 93.7 when you're buying ground beef. And the same thing with ground turkey or ground chicken. You want the lean one. And turkey usually can come like 99.1. So like 1% fat. It does get dry as fuck. So be prepared for that. But that's usually what you want to look for. It's like the leanest meats. Shrimp is safe. Fish, like tilapia, salmon, mahi-mahi, all those things. Like fish, I eat fish every single day. I've kind of like stopped eating chicken and beef so much like I'll eat it when I go out but at home I eat fish mainly and eggs and egg whites those are really good a couple other things I like to eat are low-fat yogurt low-fat cottage cheese I fucked that up oh my god it's so good quest chips which are like protein chips you could do protein bars but for protein bars quest is not that good Protein bars. I like Bear Bells. it doesn't matter the brand you get but the thing you want to look for on a protein bar is 200 calories and 20 grams of protein. You don't want to eat a protein bar that doesn't really give you that. Because if you're eating a protein bar, you're eating it for protein. A lot of these protein bars can be like three, 400 calories with 16, 20 grams of protein. That's it. If you have 200 calories and 20 grams of protein, that's like pretty clean. That's like a really good, like worth it protein bar. Like some protein bars would be like, 250 calories, 15 grams of protein. What the fuck is all the extra shit about? You know what I mean? And Bear Bells taste really good. This is not sponsored by them, but like I'll plug them because I eat them all the time. Also for protein, you can do protein powders. I'm not recommending any because they all taste like shit. Just find the one you can get down. <laughs> but look for lean ones like isolate, like whey isolates are gonna be pretty good. But when you're looking at protein powders, just get the ones that are around 120 to 150 calories per scoop. And make sure each scoop has like 25 to 30 grams of protein. So just remember that with protein powders. That's the leanest shit you can get to. So like 120 calories for 25 to 30 grams of protein, great. Now I'm gonna ramble off some fruits and vegetables that I eat freely. Like I just eat them all the time, nonstop. Don't track them, don't count them, don't care. Like I just eat them all the time. You got strawberries, blueberries, watermelon, peaches. I'd be fucking up some peaches. Cantaloupe and honeydew. That one is like a shocker, but it's actually like not bad. Grapes, but watch it. Those are very easy to get carried away. You got oranges and grapefruits and pineapple. And you know why you're supposed to eat pineapple if you're dating somebody. <laughs> now for vegetables. A lot of people don't realize like certain vegetables. I'm being dramatic. They're a fucking vegetable. They're not that bad for you. They're not that high in calories. But Brussels sprouts pissed me off when I saw how many calories were in Brussels sprouts. Because I don't like to eat just a little bit. If I'm eating vegetables, it's like to get that volume I want. So I like to eat a lot of them and I don't have to think about it. But the things I go for, celery. If you know, you know. <laughs> cucumber. I use cucumbers. Like I'll slice them up and use them as chips too. Like if you make tuna, like a tuna salad or like a tuna dip and you use that as a chip, trust. With tahini on it, ooh, done. Lettuce, cabbage, but cabbage will make you fart. Radishes. <laughs> Eggplant, you can do like, do it in a pan, cook it, and then get like the low fat marinara sauce I was talking about and some fat free cheese and make like a little like eggplant parmesan. But like, don't get the breadcrumbs, don't fry nothing. It's just like the same vibe, same texture, same taste, but like healthy. You got broccoli, duh. Edamame, I put on my list because you have to eat it slow. And like you usually get fed up by the end of it. Like I already enough of this shit. You don't want to eat too much of it. Like it does have a good amount of protein for like a vegetable, but it can sneak up on you. But like I said, you're not going to be eating that much to hurt you. Like you'd be fine. <laughs> Spinach, duh. Tomatoes, asparagus, we'll make your piece think. Squash and green beans. Those are all safe. Literally eat them freely. Who gives a shit? Like eat as many as you want. That's kind of like my go-to with like fruits and vegetables. Like I just eat whatever I want for them. And even if you eat like a copious amount, if you're used to eating such a high amount of calories in food, for your body to be getting actual real food and need real nutrients, it's not gonna process it the same as if you ate like a thousand calories of processed bullshit food, like high fat food versus a thousand calories of fruit, which is very hard to do. Your body's gonna process it different. So don't stress about that. Like eating the fruits and the vegetables, just eat them. Have fun with it. Okay, now I just wanna talk about a couple of pointers for eating habits. 
The first one is to drink water before you eat. Like always just drink some water and like chug a little. Because when you do eat clean food, it absorbs and digests very quickly. You don't get that like feeling full vibe. So like drinking water will dilute your stomach acid and help things not digest as fast. So chugging water also will help you see if you're thirsty or hungry. A lot of people can't tell the difference if like they're parched and they want water or they want food. So it's always just a good idea to drink some water, like drink a cup, whatever, get it down and then see how you feel. Like even if you're just like gonna eat anyway, drink a cup of water because it'll take up a little space in your stomach. And like I said, not telling the difference between hungry or thirsty. When you get done smoking a cigarette for the people that smoke out there, hey, drink water first. And if it's not a time that you usually eat and you wanna just go snack, chew a piece of gum. Chew a piece of gum for like five, 10 minutes and then see if you still wanna snack. Cause when I smoked, that was a bitch. That was a bitch. Every single time I smoked, I was like, oh, I need a, I need a snack. I need something. <laughs> my next thing that I do for whenever I want like something sweet before my workout, I'll eat like a spoonful of like cake icing. I'll eat gummy bears. Usually I eat gummy bears like after my workout because it helps. If you, if you know, you know, okay. Or like eat a tablespoon of honey or like two tablespoons of honey. Eat some bananas, like whatever you want before your workout because Whatever you eat like sugar wise and carb wise right before your workout, you're gonna burn it off immediately. So don't stress too much about it. It's good to have a little bit of carbs in you before you work out because it'll help you stay energized and stay going like through it. But that's when if you're craving something, eat a little bit of it, like the icing thing. Like I had this like kick for Funfetti icing and I would eat like a literal spoonful of just cake icing, like frosting, <laughs> like every day before I go to the gym. And I would just love it. Sometimes I'd have two. Sometimes it was three, but then I would just do a little extra cardio. But if you're gonna have a little cheat, or like a little something, just have it before your workout. But I'm not talking like a lot, because if you eat too much, then you don't wanna go. But that's one way that I would like kick my sweet tooth. And that's one thing I still do. Like I still eat gummy bears. And like we'll eat honey or like bananas before my workout. Like that's just cause you need it. Like you have better workouts when you do that. And for anyone who wants advice about gym anxiety and getting started in the gym, I have a whole podcast episode about it. It's episode 63. So if you wanna watch it on YouTube, episode 63, if you wanna to listen to the audio version on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, just search Aware and Aggravated, episode 63, and it'll pop up. It's about gym anxiety. But I also gave a lot of tips for beginners and everything you need to know. My next little eating habit, I wanna tell you, have shit ready. Have things ready to grab when you walk up to the fridge, just ready to go. Don't have everything where you have to cook it. Like meal prepping is like good, easy. Like I meal prep, a lot of people ask about that, so I'll tell you. The way I meal prep is like prepping a bunch of ingredients and then I will make what I want out of it. So like I'll make a bunch of fish, I'll make a bunch of potatoes, some rice, some vegetables, and then every single time I eat, I'll pull out what I need from each thing and then whatever mood I'm in, I'll season it to what I want to eat at the time. So like every meal, it's like usually the same like ingredients and same things, but I'll make it how I want. So like when I meal prep pasta and I have pasta made, I leave it just plain in the bowl and then I pull it out. Some days I want a little red sauce in it. Some days I want it to be like cheesy with like a little low fat sour cream and some low fat cheese. Like I want like an Alfredo vibe. So like I'll just season it to how I want it, but that's how I meal prep. Like I don't prep the exact meals because I do work from home. So I'm able to access this. But back to my point about having shit ready. Have fruits and vegetables in your fridge ready to go. So every time you walk up to it, like you can eat a little something or like when you're cooking and you're like preparing what you're gonna eat, you got something to eat. I'm a snacker while, I, while I'm cooking. I have to have something to snack on, I'll go nuts. Like I start cooking when I'm hungry. So if I gotta stand there for 20 minutes and wait, I'm gonna be eating other things. And you wanna have things ready that are lower calorie and like, in line with your goals where you can eat it freely and not like stress about it while you're cooking your food. So like I like to just have things ready, like fruits, vegetables, even like random stuff like protein bars, chips, like the protein chips I'm talking about, or like Cheez-Its, like just have some stuff like ready so you can just grab it and you don't grab for other shit. Another tip I have is chew gum. I chew gum all the time just cause I like it and I'm very conscious of bad breath and you're never gonna catch me with bad breath. I don't like that shit. But my hack with gum is if you want something sweet, you can sabotage it by chewing a piece of minty gum. Or go in your bathroom and throw mouthwash in your mouth. When mint hits your mouth, to go and try and eat something sweet afterward, it ain't gonna taste right. It ain't gonna taste right. It's the most sad shit 
like when I first learned and like started doing this, I was like chewing a piece of gum and then I would try and eat something sweet. And it just wasn't nice. And I'm like, oh, I don't even enjoy it. That's the point. You don't want to enjoy it. You want to like sabotage it. If you're feeling like that urge where it's uncontrollable of like, oh my God, I'm going to like binge or like I'm going to eat this whole cheesecake, chew a piece of gum first. It's going to fuck it up. It's going to make it less enjoyable. And I guarantee you, you'll eat less of it. <laughs> the next little eating habit I have, and one thing I still do, is if you go out to a restaurant or you're eating dessert anywhere, let yourself have two to three bites of whatever it is. Who cares? Eat two, three bites of the dessert. Enjoy it. Like, have fun and get to experience it. You don't need to eat the whole thing. And a lot of people, myself included, have this like completion fetish where it's like, I have to see my plate clear to like be happy. It's like, I grew up like eating to that point of like, if you didn't finish, like it wasn't a, it wasn't good. So I have this like satisfaction of like, okay, it's all gone. But that's something you can unlearn. You don't have to be like that forever. You can still leave food and don't waste it. Like take it home or give it to somebody. I'm not talking about waste food, but like, you can still leave food on the plate and save it for later or whatever. But don't miss out on the experience of like having the cake, but have some self-control. Like have a couple of bites and be done with it. Put it down, get the taste, be happy, and that's it. If you feel like you can't even walk that line of just having a couple of bites, don't even do it. Remove it because getting that level of self-control takes a minute. Okay, that's the bottom of my list. That's all my tips. I want everybody to leave me a comment down below and tell me if this was helpful for you. Tell me if you're excited to go try this shit out because I just made it really applicable and real easy. If you found this episode helpful, leave this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment and let me know because this is what I really wish I could have found a long time ago. So I wanted to make it for you guys. Oh, I've been planning this for a while. I just haven't sat down to do it because I know people are going to try and cancel me and freak out about it. Oh my God, shut up. Everybody's responsible for their own life, okay? This is what works for me. If you don't like it, don't follow it. But I will leave a link to the Gym Anxiety episode, episode 63, in the description of this podcast if you want to go listen to that. Also, I will leave all of my social media if you want to check that out. Follow me everywhere. Fun. I do post a lot of recipes on TikTok, and I post a lot of, like, the food that I eat on Snapchat if you want to keep up. That's more like a day-to-day, -day, like, version of my life. But for anyone that's still here, this is your last chance to get a ticket to my tour. But that is all I have for this week's episode. Everybody, be safe. Take care of yourself, lose your damn weight, girl, and I will talk to you guys next Sunday.